Hey everybody. So as you can see, we're driving. So some of you saw that I did a little video about the documentary on uh, psychiatry from Scientology. And then my beautiful girlfriend Tristan is behind the camera right now. She informed me that they actually have a museum. I'm like, oh, well we live in Las Vegas. LA is not that far. Let's take a road trip and check this out. Let's see what Scientology's museum on the history of psychiatry is. So I'm not sure what to expect, so you're gonna come along on this journey with me, but a few things that I'm hoping for. Well, I don't know. Actually, I'm hoping for it to be normal, which it won't be, but I think they might have that thing, what is that called, an E-meter? An E-meter, their little thing that like tests you for any mental health issues, which is basically like a little lie detector. If they have one of those, I'm gonna do it. Oh yeah, and my son's here, but we're we're struggling with the camera angle, so you'll see him later. Anyways, I, I'm i wondering if they have like, I'm hoping, since my son's with me, they don't have any like traumatizing photos of like old time stuff, but my son's a big boy, and we'll talk about it, we'll discuss it, and all that stuff. But we just passed Barstow, we're about an hour away, and we'll keep you posted. All right, y'all, I got a little power nap in, so we're about to head off to the Scientology Museum. And by the way, for all of you who think uh, us YouTubers are ballers, like, <laughs> we found a really cheap place in LA. It's nice, I think it's safe, but we'll see. All right, we're heading off to the museum. All right, everybody, we made it, and I got, boom, the little one with us. So, oh, we're right outside. So what's interesting, is that it doesn't even doesn't even say Scientology on there, you know? But yeah, they have a website restoring human rights. So I'm gonna check that out later too. Anyways, going inside. We'll be back. Alright everybody, we made it back. And since this hotel room for some reason does not have chairs, you get standing Chris today. All right, so we made it back. We made it back alive from the Scientology Museum. And the only weird thing that happened was Tom Cruise chased us around a little bit. <laughs> I'm just kidding with all of you guys. All right, anyways, yeah, we got back and uh, I brought my son with us, as you know. And it was weird trying to figure out like how to talk to him about it before we went in there because obviously some things in there uh, are historical. Some things in there are going to be blown out of proportion and all that kind of stuff. So we had a chat and I'll be circling back to that because we had a conversation afterwards once we got out of there. So we went in there and I didn't even really think about this until Tristan brought it up later. But we walked in there, one of the, the dudes at the front desk who came to greet us, he was like, he's like, hey, have you been here before? And I was like, no. He's like, oh, you look familiar. I was like, no, we're from out of town. But Tristan brought it up later. She's like, I wonder if they saw your video. And I'm like, huh, maybe they did. Because a lot of people, like, after I did my last video, they're like, oh, they're going to come for you. And I'm like, what? But I'm wondering if for some reason they saw my video. That video only has like 500 views. So that, that would be weird. But anyways, go in there and you check in. You got to like sign in. And I told them that we were just psychology students. You know what I mean? Uh, but... Uh, yeah, you like sign in and then you you walk into this room, really dark room, and they have like a, a video that plays. And there was only two other people who we went in there, so I'm like, oh, it's gonna be pretty empty. But there ended up being like, eh, not like a ton of people, but there was a decent amount of people. It's like a small museum. It just kind of goes in this kind of like U shape, right? But you sit in there, you sit in this dark room and they play you like this video about like the history of psychiatry and industry of death. It's pretty much the exact same intro of that uh, documentary that I talked about. So they kind of they kind of prep you that psychiatry is just this evil industry, right? And you walk in there and it's, it kind of goes in chronological order from like the history of psychiatry. So they start back with like those weird like torture-like devices. Like they had like 
ones that were like remade. Like there was like this chair where it was like wooden chair and then there's like a thing over your head like this. And it was weird. And they said like, I read the little description. It's like to keep people from like going like that and stuff. And then they had like a bunch of the other like kind of torture devices. They had one device in there, which I don't know if it's real or not. I'm sure it is because they did crazy stuff. But it was because they thought it was like ovary induced hysteria, where it was like this device that went up in a lady and like squeezed their ovaries, which is kind of a little strange. But then you go through and they kind of go to like the World War II side and they talk about psychiatry from like, you know, World War II and the Nazis and everything like that and how they were trying to do like eugenics and all that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? So anyways, you're walking through there, you get past the whole Nazi area and then it starts getting towards like 1950s and stuff like that when uh, medications were introduced, when electroshock was introduced and they actually have this thing where like you push a button and it shows like the bzzz. It was interesting too, because when you walk in there, they ask for like donations because it's a free museum. But they they ask you if you want to sign like a petition or like uh, donate money for like trying to end electroshock, right? And I'm on the fence about electroshock because back in the day, it was like this crazy, insane thing. Like you saw like one flew over the cuckoo's nest and all that. But did you know, did you know Carrie Fisher our girl, Princess Leia, she actually swore by electroshock therapy. Like she said that that like helped her a lot. She, I think she said she had multiple sessions. I read one of her shorter books and she like, she was saying how it really helped her with her bipolar disorder, right? But then you go through and it starts showing like all the medications and they have a bunch of like stats and graphs and stuff saying how many medications are being prescribed. And I don't know how accurate those numbers are. They had a few citations at the bottom, but they weren't from like organizations that I've heard of, but like, check it out. Whether or not those numbers are accurate, I'm not sure, but I do know it's something that I talk about, especially as a prescription drug addict in recovery. Like I do know that the United States prescribes a buttload of those medications, like not just psych meds, but you know, obviously pain meds and everything like that. And right after that, you walk into this little area and they have this whole wall of uh, celebrities who have passed away for various reasons, right? And like they had like Robin Williams on there, Heath Ledger, they had, uh, God, you guys are gonna make fun of me for this. They had the woman who played Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz on there. Is it Garland? Huh. Anyways, they had a bunch of people there and they, they had these little descriptions and they would either blame it on, you know, well, they would say suicide or they would blame it on uh, the actual medications. And that was kind of an ongoing theme of people who committed suicide while on these medications. And I'm going to circle back to that in just a second. The weirdest part about that whole celebrity side of it was they had Ozzy Osbourne on there. And those of you who know, Ozzy Osbourne is alive and kicking, all right? <laughs> um, so he's still alive, but I read the little description. It was just talking about like the medications that he's been given over the year for his mental illness and, and all that kind of stuff. So the next part, like for me, was kind of the most uh, uh, disturbing area. Actually, there was a part right before it where they showed like this hall of shame for psychiatrists. So yeah, I'll tell you about the next part in a sec. They hold this, showed this hall of shame for like psychiatrists. Um, some of them were in trouble for prescribing too many medications. Some of them were uh, uh, pedophiles and things like that. And something that you know I ended up you know talking to my son about. I talked to Tristan about. But I think I counted them. I counted how many psychiatrists they had on there, and it was like thirty. 31 or 33, right? And I was like, listen, because I'm, I'm a stats guy. I'm all about them stats, baby. And I'm like, okay, so you have 30, 33 people up here, right? Like how many psychologists, how many psychiatrists do you have in the United States at any given moment, right? Like thousands, maybe millions, I don't know. Maybe I'll find the stat and put it up on the screen. You know what I mean? And it's like, okay, so these 30 throughout this entire history, like that's not a large number and something I talked to my son about 
later was in any industry, like let's look at police officers, right? Like you will find some shady police departments. Like what was it in Boston or Baltimore or whatever, where they, like just a couple years ago, there was like all these police officers who got in trouble for like planting evidence and all these things. Like you wouldn't say all police officers are bad. You know what I mean? So when creating this museum, it could be easy to find the worst of the worst examples. You know, like this whole thing was just like this kind of like scary, like look at the worst of the worst. But with any industry, if you find the worst of the worst, it can make the whole industry look bad. You know what I mean? So as you walk through the next part, it showed like the, uh, the history of the DSMs, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. And they had like some things on the walls that said like pseudoscience and all these things. But it's interesting because the Scientologists kind of pick and choose, you know, who they're going to like be uh, the authoritative figure. You know what I mean? So if it's like, for the most part, they'll, they'll show like journalists or authors and things like that. But then you have like a psychologist or psychiatrist who is kind of against like the overdiagnosing of the DSMs or anything. Then they use them as an example. So they're kind of doing the reversal, right? So they'll be like, oh, well, here's one good psychologist who thinks that this whole thing is wrong or this aspect of psychiatry is wrong. You know what I mean? They, they cherry pick. They're like, oh, this is a psychologist who believes, in, uh, believes what we're saying. They must be one of the good ones, you know? I was actually thinking too, and you guys can let me know in the comments, like how many psychologists or mental health professionals do you think are Scientologists, you know? And maybe they get called on them to pluck them out for these videos and everything. A lot of them are like psychologists that I've heard of and some of their books I've read about overdiagnosing or overprescribing and things like that. The next part, sorry, I'm doing all this by memory of walking through there and you're probably seeing some clips and everything. But the next part, that was the most disturbing part for me. And it was like about children. All right, so it was about children who have been affected by the terrible things of psychiatry. And they have that they little section on Columbine, but then they had this wall of like young kids, like I'm talking 12 and under, and some of them died, um, you know, because of the medications, notice my air quotes, some of them had committed suicide at a very young age. And like I said, there was an ongoing theme of medications causing suicide. And here's the thing, like if you look at any medication, any medication, like hell, you could probably look at Viagra, right? And one of the side effects is like suicidal ideation. Like to cover their butts, these pharmaceutical companies have to list all the side effects, all of the side effects. And it is very rare. Like a lot of you watching this video right now might have been on meds at some point or another, or you're currently on meds and you did not experience any suicidal ideation. For example, I've been on meds like antidepressants for over seven years now and none of them have made me suicidal so again it's cherry picking to be like oh oh these people but the the thing that bothers me is there's no real way to prove it you know what i mean there's no way to prove this medication is what made that person suicidal because as some of you probably know these medications may not work for everybody so you can have a depressed suicidal person, put them on a medication, the medication isn't as effective for that person based on their personal biology, their genetics, whatever it is. Like they can actually do genetic testing to see which medications will work best for you. Like, well maybe the medication didn't work and it just didn't stop their suicidal ideation. There's no real way to test for that. You see what I mean? But yeah, it was like, they had like chairs, like it was a classroom and over by the, uh, some of these lockers, they had these things like facts about kids and how they're introducing this like crazy mental health and psychology and psychiatry thing into schools. So Dylan came over and he was looking at it with us. And there was one part where it was talking about like this anger management thing that they were implementing in schools. Like it was teaching kids about psycho like their mental health and anger management. And it was saying that it was turning these kids into like killers. Like it was nuts. But I was asking Dylan, I was like, 
have they ever taught you this in school? Is this part of your curriculum? He's like, no. And then there were some other things where they said, this is what they're doing in schools. I'm like, Dylan, do they do that at your school? And he's like, no. You know what I mean? So there's things on the walls like maybe one awful school or one terrible school did something, you know? Like, like you hear shady stuff happen at random schools all the time, but this doesn't mean it's like the whole thing, okay? So we ended up, uh, that was the last section. So we ended up walking out and they have this huge area, this huge area. I don't remember if I got a clip of that, but this huge area where it's filled with like books and pamphlets and all this other stuff. And a lot of them were free. Right, like they had a whole section on like different medications, like antidepressants, stimulants, antipsychotics, and all this other stuff. And then uh, those were all free. And then on this other wall, they had um, ones that you could buy. And like they like really like they're good. Like you know any charitable organization or one that's free or whatever is gonna really try to get money out of you. So the dude was like, you know, hey, you know, do you want this? It's only ten bucks. You know, whatever. It helps go towards you know. And I'm just like, whatever, I'll just get one of these. Like, I'm the type of person, you provide something f f to me for free, like, I want to compensate you a little bit, you know? And then, like, uh, when we went to go cash out and pay out, they have, like, this little kind of gift store. And by the way, on the left side, they have, like, this conference room where there was, like, people in all these business suits, like, watching some videos. And, like, I was like, I wonder what this is. I wonder if this is, like, investors or... I have no idea what that whole thing was all about. But you go in the little gift store and they, like check you out and they had a they had a book that I wanted to look at I might get a copy sometime but it was about labeling children with mental illnesses but they had like uh shirts and bumper stickers talking about like you know uh I don't need no meds or you know whatever it is and anyways we end up checking out and they have like a little form that you fill out so they get their like tax write off and he's like hey do you want to donate some more I'll toss in something else and I'm like sure just 20 bucks like you know I paid 10 for the thing here's another 20 bucks and he gave me something on the military or veterans or whatever but <laughs> after we left like Tristan kind of made a good point she's like why'd you even give them money I was like I don't know they were nice and they like you know we, we got to come here for free she's like yeah but you're like donating to a cause that you don't agree with I'm like huh that's an interesting point <laughs> you know but I, I don't know I, I, hopefully $20 doesn't let them do any kind of massive propaganda scheme okay so the most interesting part was we got into the car and like i said um before we went in there we talked to dylan you know and something i haven't told you guys and i i, I don't know if i'll do a video on this but my son's actually he's in fifth grade and he's doing a project for school um they they got different topics for like global issues that they need to like figure out solutions for and stuff and his group is actually doing like suicide on a global scale right so that's really interesting and you know obviously he knows i do a lot so obviously he knows i do a lot with like mental health he used to come with me to the events i did at the drug rehab and i've talked to him about addiction and you know all this other stuff so i've been really involved in this project you know because i don't <laughs> i don't trust the school to really talk to him about suicide and all this other stuff the way I think you should talk to children and plus they're doing some independent research so I've been really involved trying to let him know and talk to him you know and kind of like I don't want him to freak out and you know and stuff and just really know how to help people because next year's middle school then you get high school and that's when a lot of this mental health stuff starts hitting our children so I've been working with him a lot on that so when he came in there I was telling him you might learn some stuff for your your project and stuff but you know ask questions and we'll talk about it so we got out and we get in the car and I'm like, all right, Dylan, what'd you think? Do you have any questions or anything? And I was just reminding him, I'm like, you know, some of that stuff is like true about history and some of it isn't, uh, you know, some of it is like blown up. Uh, like I was telling him about, you know, exaggerations, right? Like, like some people have a bad day and somebody people are like, oh my God, this is the worst day ever. Like he's, he's 11 years old. So I got to, you know, cater how I talked to him about this stuff to an 11 year old. And I was just talking about how things are blown out of proportion. But then we also have had a conversation about negativity, like that negative bias. And we talked about how they were picking the worst of the worst examples, right? And my son, he does a, you know, a gratitude journal and stuff like that. So he knows all about focusing on the positives and everything. So we had a conversation about how this museum was focusing widely on the negative 
aspects. And now that I think about it, they didn't offer me one of those little, uh, those little tests that I was hoping to take. So maybe I'll swing by the local campus here and get one if they're, if they're back there again. But anyways, I asked them, do you have any questions? And this is something I didn't even think about until Dylan asked me. And he's like, not to be rude. <laughs> That's his favorite thing. Like when he's, <laughs> whenever he says, not to be rude, like you always wonder what's coming next. But he says, not to be rude, but how can I believe you and not them? And I'm like, oh, damn. I'm like, do I got to bring my son back onto this side? You know what I mean? <laughs> but I'm glad. I'm glad he asked questions. I'm glad he's inquisitive, you know? I don't think that we should believe everyone or everything at face value. I'm glad that I'm his father and he even questions me because, you know, maybe he'll disagree with me on something or maybe he wants to know how I know what I know. You know, like that's what ancient Greek philosophers used to do. Like uh, uh, Socrates was all about like, how do you know what you know? And that's what he was asking me about. And I explained to him, you know, um, just all the research I do, all the all the books I read, all the statistics I look at, and everything. But then, um, you know, Tristan chimed in, and she's like, she's like, Dylan, I worked in a psych hospital. Like Tristan, when she used to uh, live in here in California, she worked at a psych hospital for I think a little over two years. And she's like, I've worked in that field, and they're not torturing people. We're not shoving, you know, medications down their throat. Like obviously, it's a psych hospital, like where people are having like psychotic breaks or they're schizophrenics or, you know, whatever the case may be. So, you know, we had a conversation with Dylan, like, yes, yeah, some people do have to be, you know, restrained or do da, 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 but a lot of it's to keep them safe from hurting themselves or hurting somebody else, you know? And I kind of explained to him like, just a couple different disorders and how their brains work differently um, and all of that. But then after Tristan brought that up, I'm like, yeah, Dylan, I'm like, and I worked at a place like that, right? Like I worked at the drug and alcohol rehab, but we specialized in dual diagnosis. So people there had mental illnesses as well. And Dylan has come with me there. He's come with me to the rehab. I'm like, I'm like, do you think that we had like torture devices in a basement? Like we didn't even have a basement there. I'm like, you've seen these places. But then we also reminded him, his grandma, you know, she, she's a psychologist. His mom just graduated from college uh, uh, majoring in, uh, I forgot which form of psychology it is, right? So he has a lot of people in his life who work or are educated in this field. And I use that to kind of show him like, hey, like you know people and are, do you think we're awful people? Do you think we're torturing people? You know, I'm like, yeah, so think about it. There's a lot of good people out there. But then we had a conversation. I was like, I was like, have you ever had a bad substitute? He's like, oh yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, but have you ever had a good substitute? He's like, yeah, right? So I was explaining to him that there's good and they're bad, kind of like the, the, the police thing that I talked about earlier. You're gonna find bad ones, but there's gonna be a lot of good ones too. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, I just thought that was interesting because I think that, if anything, would be the most dangerous. Like, I, I, after we brought that up, I was like, holy crap. Like, I thought about all the other people who, who were in there. And I'm like, well, if they don't know, like if they don't know, you know, the facts and if they don't know people who actually work in the industry, if they don't know, you know, much about this field, like what if they really got sold on this stuff? You know what I mean? What if, um, what if a really, you know, mentally ill person saw that and they don't get help? And that's something I was talking to Dylan about too, since he's doing this um, project on suicide a lot of what they're working on is providing people with resources and getting them help and everything like that. I'm like, so think about that, Dylan. What if somebody was really depressed and suicidal and they went to this museum and they didn't get the help that they need? So that above anything else is what I would think would be dangerous. So I hope people educate themselves and listen, although I'm not a fan of that museum or what Scientology does, like a lot of what they said, like, you know, they they're not necessarily lying, especially when it comes to the history of psychiatry, because that was messed up, right? But they're not necessarily lying, but when you're cherry picking facts and focusing on the negative aspect, that's misleading. So they had a lot of factful things there, right? Like the people on those walls, like some of those psychologists were arrested and you know, whatever, or some of those people did die by suicide and everything like that. But when you're, picking and choosing, when you're making assumptions about why 
a person committed suicide, like that's that's an issue. But if you're in LA and you want to go check it out, do it. But anyways, to kind of cleanse our palate afterwards, we went to um, the Broad Museum and check out my Instagram at the Rewired Soul. I put a bunch of pictures. Like Tristan found it. It's like it had so many dope art exhibits, and it was free. It was totally free. And if you have a kid and you're in the area, it's right next to like the Walt Disney like concert hall. But uh, like they give kids like a little scavenger hunt, you know, to keep them occupied while you're going around the exhibits. Dylan actually liked a lot of the exhibits, but they do a little scavenger hunt, get a little prize and stuff, and they have a gift shop. And then after that, oh my God. Oh my God. Like some of you know I'm vegetarian. Like we went to this place called My Vegan and it had Thai, vegan Thai food, and it was so damn good like I, I'm 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 salivating just thinking about it it was so good so if you're ever in LA you want to you want to try like if you're not even vegetarian or vegan try this place my vegan it was dope but I've been to a place called um, veggie grill which they don't have in Las Vegas so I think I'm gonna take them to that place today but anyways hope you enjoyed this video I hope you enjoy the fact that I drove to California to check out the Scientology Museum um, they also have an organization with a website I want to check out where they're, they're doing a lot to kind of hurt the field of psychology. So I want to investigate that a little bit more. But since I drove all the way to California for y'all, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell and tell your friends about the Rewired Soul. And if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the second channel and it's going to be down in the description. It always is, baby. All right, I'm doing a lot more... Uh, uh, commentary slash mental health stuff over there kind of like I used to do on this channel anyways I'm just experimenting with things so subscribe to both do your boy a favor all right but anyways if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and before I let you go I want to send out a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel over on patreon as well as everybody who supports the channel by buying my mental health books at the rewiredsoul.com as well as everybody who gets the rewired soul merch like this hoodie somebody reached out to me last night the link for that should be in the description all right Thanks again for watching. See you next time.